So the first day of Baltimore Ravens mandatory minicamp is officially over. And by the sounds of these reports, the defense dominated. Let's hear what my guy Kyle P. Barber had to say. He said, Arthur Millette had a forced fumble and... A fumble recovery versus Zay Flowers. So Zay having a little hangover from that AFC Championship game. I see. It's okay. This is what practice is for. Uh, but he also said Arthur Millette intercepted Lamar Jackson as well. So Lamar with a little bit of hangover too. So Arthur Millette said, look, these Baltimore Ravens, they brought me back for a reason. And I'm about to show the world why they made the right decision. Also, Roquan Smith. He intercepted Lamar Jackson as well. So, Lamar, what's going on, baby? Maybe he just wanted to get a defense a little boost. Maybe he just wanted to make them feel good about themselves. He like, ah, whatever. I just toss it up and they could catch it. Uh, but then he says, Derrick Henry, he bobbled the pass early in practice. And then Brandon Stevens caught it for a pick six. So, Brandon Stevens trying to show, like, look. Last year was not a fluke. I'm about to be on that same thing this year. I'm about to be on that same time this season in 2024. Just watch me. Now, somebody who's battling for a roster spot at multiple positions is Tylen Wallace. But today, it sounds like he had a pretty positive day. Uh, he said Tylen Wallace had multiple catches. During a one-minute offense, he was targeted not one, not two, but three times. So he was being looked for. So that's a beautiful thing. And he caught two versus Brandon Stevens, including the series-ending touchdown. So this is a great start for Tylen Wallace because Tylen Wallace is not only battling for a wide receiver spot but he's also battling for a return man spot and just because he gets one doesn't mean he'll necessarily have the other I mean it's more than likely especially given who his competition is but Tyler Wallace is gonna have to fight for this thing it is not going to be given and even whatever he gets He's not going to be out on the field very often, especially on offense, because, again, you have a Rashad Bateman, a Zay Flowers, a Nelson Aguilar, a Tez Walker. So he's behind all those guys, and that's just a receiver. Don't forget about Mark Andrews, Isaiah Likely. The running back's going to get involved in a, in a passing game, too. So he has a lot that he's up against. So Tylen Wallace making a positive impact on the first day of minicamp. Great job. Somebody that was in the building, but he wasn't practicing, was our guy Super Duper Kyle Hamilton. And apparently, maybe he may be dealing with some sort of injury. Uh, Jeff Zrebik said this. He said, Ravens haven't said anything about Kyle Hamilton dealing with an injury, but he wasn't at OTAs the last few weeks, and he's not participating today. So that is something that is very concerning because, again, that's our guy, Kyle Hamilton. That guy, again, the best defender on these Baltimore Ravens. Uh, so with him being out, hopefully it's nothing serious. I don't think it is. It shouldn't be. But it's better that whatever injury he's dealing with, he's dealing with it now rather than later. Because remember, these next two days, today and then the next two days, they have the mandatory mini camp. But after that, they take that long break and then they have training camp. So whatever Super Duper Kyle is dealing with, he got these next couple of days to still rest. But then he gets that long break before training camp starts. So he should be good to go either way. Let's take some attendance real quick, shall we? A lot of people may be on summer break, but ain't no summer break around here. Now, the Baltimore Ravens, everybody was in the building except for six people and they are as following uh running back keaton mitchell well we know why he's obviously still dealing with that major injury uh wide receiver deontay hardy who did not take place in otas uh so i i'm not sure i don't i don't know what the reasoning is and we're not gonna assume but he wasn't there um adisa isaac he was there but he just he was dressed in regular clothes kyle hamilton again we just talked about him he was there but he was dressed in regular clothes not practicing um, cornerback Matthew and defensive lineman Rashard Nichols. So those were the guys that were missing for we obviously know Kyle Hamilton and Adisa Isaac. They were both hurt. But I wonder what Hardy's reason in this. And we got some good news, which is always a beautiful thing. Marlon Humphrey, the Baltimore Ravens cornerback who has been dealing with injuries, especially these past couple of seasons. Um, he was back practicing because Jameson Hensley highlighted that Marlon Humphrey had been extremely limited in the organized team activities, the OTAs, but they said he was back practicing, so that's a beautiful thing that he is a full go because a healthy Marlon Humphrey is a pretty good cornerback. He may not be what he used to be, but I think he still got a lot left in the tank, contrary to what a lot of people may say. 
Now, who are some possible hidden gems that the Baltimore Ravens could have on the squad? Some guys that we may not be talking about too much. Well, one of those guys could potentially be wide receiver Dayton Wade from Ole Miss. Shout out to my guy Bobby Trostin who caught this uh, from the Green Light Podcast. Patrick Ricard, he spoke highly of Dayton Wade, and he said this. He said, I'm just seeing every day this man's flashing. Uh, he's looking real crisp when he runs his route. He's catching all the balls. Wait a minute. Uh, he has strong hands. He doesn't say too much. He just puts his head down and is consistently just making plays. I think he's a guy to look out for. And it, coming from Patrick Ricard, like he got experience. Because if I take you back, it feels like that was forever ago. The Baltimore Ravens signed Pat Ricard as an undrafted rookie free agent defensive lineman. This dude wasn't even a fullback. And literally, his nickname is Project Pat. This man was a project. They were just trying him out at fullback just to see how it went. And he turned into a pro bowl at the position. So he knows. He got eyes for undrafted rookie free agents because he has the experience as one that completely went from this undrafted guy to somebody who's respected around the league. Perfect. This is why we did not want to make any assumptions. We didn't want to assume anything. Deontay Hardy, uh, who had missed some OTAs and wasn't there for mandatory minicamp today. Uh, Harbaugh said that Deontay Hardy's young baby is in the hospital, so he's staying with his family this week. See, th this is why it's very, very important not to assume anything because you just we didn't know that earlier recording this video we didn't know what was going on but it literally just came out just now so he was dealing with that so hopefully everything works out for the best because that's far more important than some little mini camp practice even even if it is mandatory that that is definitely mandatory over any mini camp practice any day of the week so shout out to Deontay Hardy hope everything goes really really good with that and look at that. We just got to be a little patient and then we'll get all of our questions answered. Harbaugh said that Kyle Hamilton has some loose bodies removed from his elbow. He'll be ready for training. Camp. See what we were just talking about? We just said it was super duper Kyle. Whatever injury that he's dealing with, that even if he don't participate in the mini camp, we said he'll have these next couple of days to take it easy. But then he'll have that long break. Before they go to training camp And then he should be good to go We just said that before we even knew And boom right there Harbaugh confirmed it Man let me mess around and be a head coach I, I could do this but Anyway that, that, that's really really good to hear So guess Kyle was dealing with something Loose bodies removed from his elbow I don't know what that means But hey it, it, he'll be ready for training camp So it, he's good to go for me uh, Baltimore Ravens trying to be slick and, and end up flipping one of these guys For a draft pick Hey who knows because they done done it before Because according to Aaron Wilson Who used to cover the Baltimore Ravens Years ago he said Commanders Packers, Lions and the Ravens So all four of these teams Have requested to host US uh, FL Panthers All conference kicker Jake Bates for visits per league source. So all these teams, they want to bring him in. Uh, it's a competitive situation for a strong leg kicker, a former Texans preseason roster member, uh, and a graduate from the Razorbacks. So he, hey, he, he's a hot commodity right now. And he's a kicker. He's a kicker and he's a hot commodity. So Baltimore Ravens, could they be looking for a predecessor to Justin Tucker? Or could they just be looking to bring him on and have him on during training camp and stuff? Because he's somebody that a lot of people want. And then they could end up flipping him somewhere else to get some capital in return. After mini camp was over, uh, there was a press conference. And Derrick Henry spoke. Roquan Smith did. Ronnie Stanley as well. But Derrick Henry, when he spoke at the press conference, he said something that a lot of us have been echoing throughout this offseason. Reason why he is just expected to be such a big part uh, of what the Baltimore Ravens do on offense. He talked about how he's looking forward to not having all eyes on him. He's looking forward to all the attention not being on him and, and that's what's going to make him that much more dangerous for the Baltimore Ravens that's going to make him that much more special uh for this offense the fact that it ain't just gotta be him 
Yeah, there's going to be a workload that's put on him, but it's a lot of other people that's going to be helping him carry it around. So that should make Derrick Henry that much more effective, and that should keep him that much more fresh, especially down the stretch and come playoff time when we're going to need him the most. Somebody else who spoke uh, after the first day of minicamp today was one of Baltimore Ravens leaders. Uh, Roquan Smith Roquan Smith He talked about just The atmosphere with the Baltimore Ravens he, he, he reminisced on when he was first traded To the Baltimore Ravens But something that he said that I don't know It got me a little excited uh, He talked about Trenton Simpson And he said that those two Are actually Him and Trenton Simpson They gonna take a trip Before training camp So you may think Okay Where are they going to What do that got to do with anything I don't care about that Well I do Because You know how if you work with somebody and y'all been working together, whether it's a short period of time, long period, whatever, if you have an outside, like a friendship with that person, then usually y'all work together even better when y'all are on the clock. So I'm just thinking about the rapport. I'm just thinking about the chemistry that Roquan Smith is going to potentially have with the Trenton Simpson, and, and that's going to make things even better for him. And then something else, and I didn't even think about this like this whole time. Uh, somebody asked Roquan Smith about Zach Orr's potential impact as a first-time play caller, first-time defensive coordinator. And Roquan Smith said, hey, we're going to take everything that's thrown at us. But they also talked about how Zach Orr sees things having been an inside linebacker and playing the same position that Roquan Smith did. And I was like, oh my, I didn't even think about that. So this dude could potentially unlock Roquan Smith on another level. And this will make Roquan Smith probably an even bigger leader than he already is. I mean, he's probably the biggest leader on the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, but he this could make this could just take their relationship to a whole nother level. This could take Roquan Smith's command of the defense to another level because you have somebody that sees things the way that you do because y'all see it from the same point of view. So I, I just thought that that was a very interesting tidbit uh, from Roquan Smith about Zach Orr. So that made me look forward to seeing how this defense operates even more. We know a team season can live and die by the offensive line. The offensive line is right. Oh yeah, things could go great. The offensive line is rough, then yeah, and we've seen that before. Uh, but Ronnie Stanley, Ronnie Stanley is a big part of everything that the Baltimore Ravens want to do on offense because so much depends on him and his health. And we know Ronnie Stanley just hasn't been healthy. Um, his, his health has been very off and on uh, just throughout his career, but especially recently. And a lot of times it's been more off than on. But Ronnie Stanley, he talked about that. And he said that he feels great. He said, I feel I'm, I'm as strong and as quick as I've ever been. Now, we know a lot of players, they say that in the offseason. They always say, oh, this is the healthiest that I've felt uh, in forever. This is the healthiest I've felt in my career, but we'll see. Uh, he also talked about how he didn't want to go out on last year, and he felt that would have led to some regret, and that's part of the reason why he agreed to the contract extension. Uh, and he said that uh, it was killing him on the inside that he wasn't playing to his potential last year. Ronnie Stanley, he, he was up, up and down last year. I mean, everybody on the Ravens offensive line, well, except Tyler Linderbaum. Tyler Linderbaum was probably all the way up last year. But besides that, Ravens offensive line, they were up and down last year. I think they definitely had more ups than downs, but still. Uh, he also talked about how he has zero doubt that he could still play up to a standard and be one of the top tackles in football. But he did say that he hasn't felt this healthy since 2020. So with him being healthy, that can just, that'll make this offensive line just so much better. But hopefully he not only is healthy now, but he can stay healthy throughout the entirety of this football season. Man, this video just filled with so many different major updates with the Ravens. Harbaugh said about the offensive line, because you know that's been one of the biggest position groups where there's a lot of question marks because we just don't know. We only got two positions that are officially official. The starting center, Tyler Linderbaum, and the starting left tackle, Ronnie Stanley. But other than that... We got no clue. But Harbaugh said that the goal will be to have a general idea about the starting offensive line by the second week of training camp. Uh, but he did say it could linger on into the preseason. So we're going to see. We're going to see. It, it could be one of those things that just it comes right down to it. It comes right down to the wire. Shout out to the wire, by the way. Get a wire. Anyway, um, so that is a, a very, very significant because it's a lot of open spots. Again, left guard, right guard, and right tackle. Like, 
how do you have that many open spots on your roster right now up for grabs? But, hey, that's what competition is all about, and that's what training camp is for. So the Miami Dolphins showing the Baltimore Ravens some love. And how are they doing that, you may ask? Well, this was news yesterday. It said breaking came from Jordan Schultz. Former Jets and Saints safety Marcus May is signing with the Dolphins per source. So they take him off the market. So Ravens options for safeties, it becomes even more limited. So, hey, you, you got to choose who you want And you ain't got as much of a selection as you once had So hopefully, they make the right selection But anyway, continue, it says May had multiple teams interested But loves the roster in Miami And wants to be part of a Super Bowl contender Which he believes Miami has Look, I, I, I like the Dolphins the Dolphins cool Um, Y'all know, I'm down here in Miami I just... I just don't see it like at running back, yeah, they got a Super Bowl roster. Offensive line is good enough. Wide receiver, oh, uh, yeah, definitely. Defense, for sure. Even coaching, yeah. But my issue with them is quarterback. Tua is cool, but in my opinion, I don't think Tua is the one. And I, I don't think it will be wise of them to sign him to a long-term contract. But anyway, that's a whole other conversation. But with the Dolphins, them signing Marcus – and. They could possibly help out the Ravens even more once we know the details of the contract. If it's a super, super low contract, which I expect it to be, it ain't going to be nothing crazy. Especially him getting signed so late. Like, it ain't going to be nothing crazy at all. That can help the Ravens in multiple ways. One, because Justin Simmons is still available. But then, two, if they sign Marcus May to a, a very low, very extremely reasonable, extremely team-friendly contract, then that's very team-friendly for the Baltimore Ravens for whether it be Justin Simmons. Or if they want to go in another direction, but Baltimore, make it Justin Simmons. It's always nice when people just throw around some fun ideas, just some stuff that not to be taken too seriously. And that's exactly uh, what CBS Sports' Jared Dublin was doing. Because he talks about one of the major storylines this offseason has been the NFL's massive change to its kickoff rules and how teams will adjust to them. But the Baltimore Ravens seem well-equipped to do so. Not only do the Ravens have the league's all-time best kicker in Justin Tucker, who is already adjusting to the new rules, but they have a ton of great athletes who could help out in the return game. It says, Jared Dublin listed quarterback Lamar Jackson, receivers A. Flowers, running backs Derrick Henry and Keaton Mitchell as ideal kick returners. The Ravens were one of just two teams to have four players listed, with the other being the Miami Dolphins. Now, again, he said it's not to be taken seriously, but just something to think about. Like, can you imagine? Like, that would be, like, glitchy. Like, that's stuff that you do in Madden. Obviously, you wouldn't do that in real life. N definitely not with quarterback Lamar Jackson. Not with any of them. Not with Keith Mitchell. Not with Zay Flat. Not with Derrick. Because those are all key people on the Baltimore Ravens. And not that a kick returner is not a key person on a team. But you're not going to have your starting quarterback, your starting running back, your starting receiver, and another significant running back out there doing kick returns. It's just, no, nah, it's just not worth it you want to have them on offense but can you imagine like Lamar you you know Lamar Jackson and they like you know they Keaton like you know Keaton Mitchell but Derrick Henry like Derrick Henry ain't as shifty as those other three but he's so strong who gonna want to tackle him who gonna want to tackle him like all he did if he catches the ball catches the punt that's it he catches the kickoff oh that's it and if he get a running start too like him at running back that's tougher because People can hit you in the backfield before you really get a start. But at kick return, you get a running start. So who's bringing down Derrick Henry? 